Good morning. Thank you very much, Sagar. It's my great pleasure to be with you. Um, I'm going to disappoint you because this is a, a commie called as controversy in multiple myeloma, and there will be no controversy regarding emits. Immunomodulatory drugs, clearly, they are uh, the backbone of pretty much all of the uh, treatment we use in myeloma, and, uh, and I think there is no controversy regarding this. But uh, regar regarding my disclosures, I try to work with pretty much all of the companies that deal with myeloma at some point, which I hope is seen not as a conflict, but more as a link of interest. Um, you know that historically, when I was young, a very young fellow, that was yesterday, almost. <laughs> Early 2000, um, Professor Barlogi uh, introduced in the field of myeloma thalidomide. And since through my fellowship and my internship and my instructorship and my uh, associate professorship and now professorship, I was lucky enough to see all these class three compounds uh, to develop through. And uh, at the first COMI event in Bangkok, Thailand, I presented an history of the whole emits, uh, at least uh, tried to present an history of the whole emits uh, class. This year, I decided I would change my talk slightly and more uh, target the most recent and to me most impressive data we have provided in recent years uh, with emits. Uh, you know that all the emits share some similar uh, major principle mechanism of action, anti-myeloma direct stromal inhibitions, and the immunitary effect that we more and more learn with the new combination, particularly uh, with the uh, uh, checkpoint inhibitors, monoclonal antibodies, etc., in the modern era of myeloma treatment. So I've separated my talk in, uh, in uh, pretty much four parts. Uh, the, the first one uh, will be uh, upfront transplant setting, uh, upfront LED patients, uh, early relapse setting where we have had uh, many studies and one very recently, uh, again published in Union of Medicine, very, very recently, and uh, late, uh, late stage with pomalidomide. So two studies upfront that are transplant setting, which I believe have transformed and will transform our practice in the next future. In the near future, uh, this study from the intergroup francophone Manma IFM, which is uh, IFM DFCI uh, 209 study, a, a joint study with um, Dana Faber Cancer Institute and some, inst and some institutes in the US, where patients were randomized, transplant or no transplant, receiving ref botezomib dexamethasone as the backbone for induction and consolidation. Eight, eight cycles, RVD versus, versus five cycles. Uh, Michel Attal, on behalf of the group of IFM, has presented last year at ASH uh, that there are uh, uh, superiority in terms of progression for survival for all the patients independently of risk factors, independently of CR or not, before transplant, independently even on the, uh, the fact that you may reach MOD negativity, 10 minus 4, 6 before transplant, 100% of the myeloma patients needs a transplant upfront if they are transplant eligible. And that is now proved. Antonio, on behalf of his group and the EMN group, had demonstrated that earlier on last year, uh, but not with what we would call the optimal botulinum breath dex regimen. And now we have confirmed that transplant is needed for myeloma. In that study, Hervé Veloiseau, again on behalf of the IFM, has, demonstrate, has demonstrated the impact of MOD when you are capable to reach a high level of, uh, of negative MOD for patients. And I'm particularly interested in that study where by NGS he was able to show that that depth of MOD matters very, very much in that patient who are still negative, were negative for, M, for flow cytometry determination of MOD. Uh, if they are positive for NGS, still they show a um, poor in, uh, progression free survival, which show the importance of depth of response and the importance of using the best image it's up front in the induction and consolidation to reach this level of MODs, which is my first impact that I'd like to show to you uh, regarding emits. So the second study comes from the US, uh, and I uh, thank Andrzej Jakubowiak on behalf of the MMRF uh, that he has been nice enough to show these slides and to share these slides to me, with me. Uh, you, you know that years ago he has presented this study, which was Cofilzomib Revlimid Dexamethasone using a novel generation proteasome inhibitors, trying to give a potentially safer uh, uh, proteasome inhibitor to give the triplet combination for very 
long period of time, uh, not just as induction and early consolidation. And um, last year he presented at ASH, one of his colleagues presented at ASH, the same study with transplantation, and the results are, are, are I would say, very impressive, remarkable results uh, in terms of depth, uh, in terms of re reaching response, but also in terms of depth of response, uh, and in terms, particularly in terms of uh, millimolecular disease. And I suspect, and I would say, uh, that logically, in the months and years to come, most, if not all, of the uh, protocols that we will be using upfront will certainly use at least one of the emits as part of the combination. My second uh, uh, group of uh, data that I'd like to share to you, but I'm sure this one is very well known to you, is the uh, pretty much the same story, but now in the context of elderly patient non-transplant eligible. As you know, years ago, again, Antonio, on behalf of uh, a group of colleagues, have demonstrated in the M so-called MMO15 uh, study that uh, there was an impressive role for Revlimid in elderly patients upfront, not too much as induction in this combination, but definitely demonstrating that you can give in elderly patients where we believe long-term treatment is absolutely not something safe. Uh, we all we all want our elderly patients to be off treatment, free of relapse and free of disease. And he has impressively shown that you can give long-term treatment and the median PFS is just absolutely remarkable. But malfalon prednisone revlimid, I would say, is certainly a combination that is not easy to manage. And, um, and uh, the anti-group francophone of my myeloma, again, on, um, on behalf of the large group, has uh, demonstrated that there might be another option, uh, which is to use a simpler regimen, doublet, alkylator-free, the first ever demonstration that you could use a regimen without alkylating agent in elderly patients in myeloma, this time compared to one of the best standards of care, melphalon prednisone thalidomide, and again, uh, pretty much the same data showing that uh, there is a superiority of Revlimid if given for a long period of time. This is safe, this is feasible, this is manageable, and apparently this is extremely interesting for all, if not for most, if not all of the patients, but potentially, uh, because Revlimid dexamethasone was given simply as a doublet, potentially you would want to improve this regimen for patients with high risk or uh, independently of the definition of high risk. As, as certainly uh, uh, Thierry Facon will show uh, later this year, because there should be an update on the overall survival, uh, there is superiority of raflimidexamethasone tablet over methylone prednisone thalidomide triplet uh, for multiple reasons. One of them is a continuous uh, treatment given by raflimidexamethasone. But what uh, I think the first IFM 2701, a uh, so-called MMO20 study, very, very nicely showed was that in terms of quality of life, not only you can give a rev limit very safely to patients for a long period of time, but this superiority maintained over time up to 18 months, which is pretty impressive. Now, if you want to improve regimens and this particularly standard of care, in myeloma, and this is a study conducted by the Spanish, you know that malfalon prednisone botezomib was developed by the Spanish, particularly Jesus uh, San Miguel on behalf of the Vista group, and, uh, and it's actually very interesting to notice that the, the, the most important approach, the, the most significant approach for our colleagues in Spain to improve MPV, malfalon prednisone velcade, was actually simply to add an imid to the story. So they thought that to improve MPV, one way was to add revlimidexamethasone, just to show you how how much emits have transformed our practice to the point that we think that to improve one of the standard of care is because uh, an image is missing in the story. So uh, uh, Marivi very nicely demonstrated, published, and very nicely presented the study called Sequential versus Alternate. I'll be very quick on this just to tell you that there was no much difference between alternate and sequential, but the combination, the, se the sequence of in the same line of therapy giving an, an first-generation protasome inhibitors in the MPV format, followed by revlimidexamethasone later on for 18 months total, was actually showing and demonstrating significant prolongation of uh, the PFS much better than Vista and first in elderly patients non-transplant eligible. Uh, 
But if you want something much simpler than giving nine cycles of MPV followed by nine cycles of Revlimid back to the US, you may want to go with uh, uh, what Brian Dury has presented at ASH last year, a simple botosomib Revlimid dexamethasone versus Revlimid dexamethasone study. Uh, I would certainly give an elderly patient a different RVD regimen, maybe simpler than that. But definitely what Brian was able to show was that in his study, botosomib revlimid dexamethasone has very much showed unprecedented prolonged PFS, which probably is simpler than, uh, than the nine cycles MPV followed by nine cycle revlimid. So it's very, it's very uh, um, expected that uh, in the years to come, you will see more and more revlimid dexamethasone backbone, and pretty much all of the regimen we use now up front are revlimid based, which show how much the emits have impacted uh, myeloma. And I suspect that this is going to be part of the landscape for elderly myeloma patients up front. You will still have alkylators prednisone for the US, which are almost bankrupt, and France clearly bankrupt. Um, there might be some emits, PIs, and monoclonal antibodies for the other countries that are very rich. Now, in early relapse, we have seen in the two, three past years uh, amazing, tremendous changes uh, because there has been a, a numbers of uh, triplet versus doublet regimen, Revlimid again based to show how much the imids are key in the treatment of myeloma, not just up front, but at each line of therapy. And um, Aspire is the first in the list. Aspire has shown unprecedented uh, 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 increase uh, stringent CR rate that translated into uh, a significantly prolonged PFS, particularly for patients that could reach the deepest uh, response. Uh, be careful, I would say VGPR is not anymore an optimal endpoint. Clearly, CR stringent CR and the triplet emid based regimen is actually able to give you that. And again, as presented showed in early re in early uh, upfront situation, it seems that triplet. Revlimid based or imid based is extremely interesting for most, if not all, of the patients. And this has been since uh, validated in other combinations. Again, Revlimid based, Eloquan 2 with the first in class uh, monoclonal, monoclonal antibody, CS1 SLAM F7 targeting, which is called Elotuzumab. E-REVDEX versus REVDEX, early relapse again. And what we can see here in this summary is that uh, since we have combined uh, a triplet-based regimen, Revlimid dexamethasone uh, 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 as backbone in early relapse, we have been able to push the median PFS to beyond two years, which is again unprecedented and remarkable in myeloma. And so, of course, this table is going to just add more lines and columns when the daratumumab revlimid dexamethasone will come in and other combination revlimid based. And I just want to point to you that ixazomib revdex tromalin MM1 was just recently released in New England Journal of Medicine, again showing that triplet revdex is superior to doublet and in any case one of the standard of care now for early relapse. Let's move to the intermediate and end stage, and let's switch gear to another image, the last in class, the pomalidomide, called Pomalist in the US and uh, called Imnovid in, uh, in Europe and in other countries in, in the world. Just to remind to you that the situation we faced two, three, four years ago was that most of our patients have had exposure to butezomib and ravlimid, but unfortunately became refractory to those drugs. And Shashi Kumar, on behalf of a very large consortium, uh, IMF-based uh, in the world, had shown very nicely that the median survival of those patients that could not receive any imid before the era of pomidomide and the first in class botezomib unfortunately had a very short survival by less than a year. Uh, so here comes the story of pomidomide, the so last in class uh, imid in that study called Nambus or MMV03 phase 3 study that allowed the approval in the US and in Europe, first in Europe, next in the US, where pomalidomide low dose dex was compared to high dose dexamethasone with a companion trial for the patient in the control arm that were progressing. And uh, I think the two take home messages here are uh, indeed pomalidomide had a tremendous superiority compared to high dose dexamethasone, but please, please, please do not use uh, such a great drug in end stage myeloma. It is much more efficacious early on in the disease, and I'll show to you in a minute the data on that. And Clearly, uh, pomalidomide low dose dex improve over survival. Remember, the historical control was media nine months, published by Shaji uh, Kumar, and here with pomalidomide, it is more than a year. Most importantly to us is that if you use pomalidomide and truly in the earlier line, 
uh, particularly in third line, most of the patients, at least in Europe, are progressing on Revlimid. So the very practical question we had at mind was that if you are progressing on Revlimid, pomidomide belonging to the same class uh, as to Revlimid, is it safe for the patients to receive pomidomide next to Revlimid? And the answer is absolutely yes. This is demonstrated here. This has been validated in other studies and, and even in real life studies, MM010 called Stratus and now published. In, uh, in our team, in the IFM, in the first study we conducted in 2009, we noticed something very interesting, that still today, uh, six, seven years later, 40% about of the patients are surviving, are alive. Although back in 2009, those patients clearly had a three months median, median survival. So the interesting question is that how come? And we have looked into this group of patients, and that, pa that data is now validated by the second study. We found the cutoff at one year, that if you can tolerate pomidomide and benefit from pomidomide for more than a year, you are going to tremendously benefit from POM. Um, there is another study now uh, that will be published soon showing that the cutoff could be six months, but definitely demonstrate that, and that is extremely interesting interesting biologically that even in end stage, even in patients exposed to everything, you still have patients that you can give a drug and they will re-respond for a very long period of time, and certainly about 30-40% of the patients. Interestingly, those patients had none of the adverse characteristics, but that's expected. So pretty much if we kind of summarize data we have on pomalidomide, definitely MM003 was developed here in end stage, but please, 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 ex we, we would all agree that pomalidomide is an expensive agent, so let's, let's use it at its best chance to seriously prolong the survival of the patients by, by significantly increasing the depth of response, and I think the base data we have now are in the third line, where clearly there are more and more uh, data showing that uh, we, we will definitely benefit to the patients. If you were at ASH last year, you uh, certainly uh, um, uh, and, and interestingly noticed that more and more we combine pomidomide and dexamethasone in triplet-based regimen, which makes sense. You know in myeloma you need to control multiple clones, and so you need to have combinations of treatments. Uh, and you could see here that some of them are, are, are potentially available to us, at least in Europe, as a European physician, pomdex botezomib, pomdex cyclophosphamide, or pomdex claritromycin, if you believe it works. Um, some other are not yet ready for prime time, but certainly they will come on in, 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 in the future. Uh, Sahad Ismani has uh, updated the Shajit Kumar work and demonstrated that uh, now we, fi we face another era, which is now the patient are refractory to pomalidomide, botezomib, and revlimid. And we still have those patients coming to our consult, doing great, ECOG-1, uh, absolutely in great shape, but still now back to palliative care because we have no other drug beyond uh, emits. And, and now in, in Europe, and particularly in France, we have access to daratumumab, another monoclonal antibody CD38 targeting, which is a great chance to our patients. So to me, if I want to summarize IMIDS in, in a very few words, um, well, as I told you, I, I grew up as a hematologist and f later on as a myeloma physician uh, with emits and from thalidomide to pomalidomide. So to me, they are clearly the backbone of all, if not most, of the regimens. I notice that most, more and more we, we try to use emits at each line of therapy. It's not just about regimens, it's a show about how to manage emits at each line of treatment. And I've seen that the way we have modified our practice the new concept, continuous maintenance, uh, uh, checkpoint inhibitors, combination to monoclonal antibodies, immunotherapy, long-term treatment, all of this concept that we consider today as clearly the standard of care of the practice in myeloma actually comes from the development we have uh, learned with the emits. So I believe the emits have made a tremendous difference. And if I would share with you my three take home, my three keywords of myeloma, we should combine as much as possible, we should give a continuous treatment as much as possible, and we should smartly sequence as much as possible. I do think that emits have been the, the, the lead drug to take us to this key uh, uh, message. And with this, and thank you very much.